Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lick MRI. And this is a 56-year-old male who complained of shoulder pain for about three or four years. He went to the orthopedic surgeon and they did an x-ray and also an MRI following arthrogram to look at the labrum and rotator cuff. And the patient did not have a labral tear or rotator cuff tear. The shoulder looked very good overall. There's some fluid in the shoulder joint here inferiorly. You can tell that's an arthrogram. There's contrast in fluid distending the joint. But the patient did have another finding, which we saw in the x-ray. So this is the humeral head on the outside. This is the joint right here. This is the glenoid, humeral head, shoulder joint. And we see an area of low density, lucency we call it, in the uh, humeral head. It has sharply defined margins that are just mildly sclerotic. It goes along with a benign bone lesion. And on the MRI scan, we see that the lesion is a little bit hard to see on this one because the periphery is very similar to marrow. On this view here, we see the same thing. We see centrally, there's some relatively low signal. And around the periphery, there's hyperintense signal that's very similar to marrow. So this looks like fatty marrow around the periphery, which makes it, looks kinda, makes it look kind of small on this, as compared to this where we can see the actual size. Now, centrally, this is bright or hyperintense in this sequence. And when we see the brightness like this, we think about a benign bone lesion called an intraosseous lipoma. So the lipoma will have fatty marrow like this, fat signal that's just like the fatty marrow around it, so they can be kind of hard to see on these images. And centrally, sometimes they can go on to have granulation tissue or cystic necrosis centrally, so they have fluid signal in the middle. So this looks like a benign bone lesion, again, an intraosseous lipoma, it's well seen on the x-ray and MRI here we can sense the diagnosis. If it's on x-ray alone, we might think this could be a benign bone cyst or some other lesion, but here we can see that it does have fatty marrow around the periphery and it does have this uh, hyperintense signal centrally, which is classic for, again, granulation tissue or cystic change associated with an intraosseous lipoma. Now, sometimes people can have bone cyst, a unicameral bone cyst, and they can go on to heal, and you think that when they heal, they might start to ossify around the periphery and could potentially look like this, but this really is a classic appearance of a um, intraosseous lipoma. And thank you very much.